Hi everyone. All right. I would normally do this slideshow as a presentation in class, but since we're not together, I'm going to try to do it as quickly and painlessly as possible uh, in a video for you. I'm going to try to make it under 10 minutes long. Um, this is like the third time I've tried recording it. Uh, we're talking about what art and culture was like in between World War One and World War Two. So you might have been wondering why I asked you that question on Google Classroom yesterday about what TV show or movie represented your life and your feelings. And that's because I wanted to show you how artists were representing their life and their feelings in between World War One and World War Two through new styles of art and new ways of making movies, new types of music, etc. So the first thing that you should think about when you think of World War I is this word disillusionment. <clears throat> We've heard this before. Um, it doesn't go great with my grumpy cat mouse icon here, but um, it's basically like the loss of belief, the loss of faith, the feeling of depression, uh, that people had after World War One, where they just kind of looked around like, what was all of that death for? What did it mean? Nobody gained anything from this war, and yet it was so destructive. And so they're going to take this feeling of disillusionment, and they're going to put it into the art that they're making after the war is over. Uh, so the art and the culture that you, you're going to look at after World War One has a couple of characteristics, just like we did with Renaissance art characteristics. There's modern art characteristics. And those things are a focus on internal things, a focus on what's going on inside people's minds, their emotions, their psychology, their subconscious, their dreams. They're expressing non-visual things in a visual way. So instead of showing sadness by facial expression, they're going to show sadness with um, color. Like they maybe they'll have some really bluish colors in the artwork. Maybe they're going to have um, like certain types of line or shading that makes you think that they're sad. We're also going to see sarcasm and irony in the artwork where people are kind of like making fun of serious topics. Like uh, one of the videos is a film that makes fun of death. And that's because it's around them everywhere. And so they kind of have to have fun with it. Um, you're also going to see a lot of experimentation, a lot of playing, a lot of... Um, breaking tradition, breaking rules, and trying a new way of doing things. So I am I would ask you if we were in class, why do you think these ideas would have emerged after World War One? It's because of that disillusionment. It's because of that loss of belief. The government was lying to them. Their parents didn't know what they were talking about. Um, all of the things that they went into the war for ended up not being true. And so when they came back, they just were like, we can't do things the way our parents did. We can't trust what the government says. And that's how they felt after World War I. And so they put that in the art that they were making. So the rest of the slideshow, I really want you to click on these links yourselves and explore the new types of art the new types of music, the new types of dance, the new types of painting. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things. So one is like youth culture in the 1920s, in between World War One and World War Two. There was a lot more going out in cities. Um, young people wore clothing that was a little more revealing. They drank and smoked in public. They danced in a more crazy way. The adults didn't understand it. Um, Music didn't seem to follow the rules of what music was supposed to be like anymore. Um, painting didn't look realistic anymore. People weren't trying to make something look like a photograph. They're trying to make something that experience, uh, sorry, that expressed how they were feeling. So remember I said like using color to show sadness, like, yeah, she has a facial expression, but it's not really dramatic. What's dramatic is the color, the way it's painted this like can you even tell what this is exactly you know it's a, an explosion but it looks unrealistic because they're using the lines the color 
to express a feeling. Um, this is an expressionist film. So this style of art is called expressionist because they're trying to express their feelings. Um, if you click on that link and watch the video, you're going to see something that might look a little like Tim Burton because Tim Burton was, uh, he's the director of like The Nightmare Before Christmas, but he was really influenced by German expressionism. So that's a little fun connection to today. Cubism, again, a style of painting that was trying to break rules to reinvent what art was. Um, they would take an image, like this is supposed to be a fruit bowl on a table, but it's all rearranged, okay? So again, breaking the rules, going against tradition. Uh, Dadaism, you can read this information on your own. You should click this link and watch this video. But the thing to know about Dadaism, that again, they're they're experimenting, they're playing. It's all about being silly, like nothing matters anymore, so let's have fun. Surrealism. Um, this is a German surrealist painter who was painting to express things that he remembered from being in World War One. This is a scene that represents trench warfare, and it's very nightmarish. So again, not trying to be realistic, but trying to express something. The poetry, this is the thing I'm most disappointed that I'm not going to get to show you in class in person because I love seeing students' faces when they see this poem. So just like cubists were rearranging an image and breaking it down into its individual parts, breaking rules, the writers were also breaking words and sentences down into individual parts and rearranging them and trying to break rules and invent something new. So this is a poem about a grasshopper, and the reason it's about a grasshopper is because the words kind of leap around the page, just like a grasshopper leaps from one bl blade of grass to the next. Um, you should definitely click on this link and listen to Gertrude Stein, who is a 1920s author who uh, lived in Paris, and she wrote a book called The Making of Americans, and it's not going to make any sense to you, and I wish I could see your face when you listen to it. But again, she's trying to reinvent what writing even is. What is a sentence? Um, so they're, they're purposefully not following rules and purposefully not following tradition. And they're doing that for a reason. Again, it's all about that disillusionment, um, focusing more on what's going on internally and experimenting. Okay, so that didn't just happen in art and culture. It also happened in science and psychology. Um, there was much more openness about sex and sexuality. Scientists started to study different sexualities and different genders and realized that it was kind of normal at this time to want to experiment with different genders, different sexualities. Um, if you go back to the music slide, you'll see like there were gay and lesbian cl clubs, there were transgender clubs. Um, and this is partially because of the resistance to tradition. And so that was a new openness after World War One that conservatives had a backlash against. So one of the things that the Nazis were able to get followers for is because they wanted to go back to how things were before World War I. They thought Martin, modern art and jazz were trashy and that they were a bad influence on kids. And they gained followers by telling people, we need to get back to when men were men and women were women and go back to winning wars and how things were before World War I. And so the Nazis were all about um, going against this new type of culture that the young people were creating. And so that's why all of this matters. Like it's art, it's music, it's what people did with their daily lives, but it had a political um, significance to it as well. And so the reason that I want you to think so much about how art expressed what was going on in the time period is because next week, the whole week, you are going to be creating your own expressive art. So just like modern art, it doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to express those things that are going on internally. 
So again, a focus on what's going on inside the mind, psychology, emotions, expressing non-visual things in a visual way, maybe sarcasm and irony, dark humor. I know for sure some of you use that all the time. Um, experimenting and breaking tradition, reinventing the rules of what's considered art or poetry. So I'll give you more instructions on that next week, but start thinking over the weekend about how you want to express yourself through art. And don't forget to go through the slideshow, explore all of the links, look at the types of art that people are making, and um, you can take notes in your own way. But that's your assignment for today and tomorrow. And over the weekend, you can think about what kind of modern art you're going to make.